Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Arhat. In this session, we're going to look at the pension trust funds. Pension trust fund is part of the fiduciary funds. And sometimes it's known by the public employee retirement system because the federal government started the system. So it's known by PERS or SERS if you are part of the state employee retirement system. I am actually part, luckily I am part of the state, one of the state uh, employee retirement system. So let's talk about how do pension work? How do pension work? It's very important to understand how it works. So basically the government is guaranteeing, guaranteeing you a certain salary after you retire. So how does it work? First, this is, let's call this a plan. We have a plan. We have a plan. The government could send money into this, this plan. Think about a plan. It's like an account. Think about an account. The employee that's working there could also send money to this plan. So they, they will send money. They will save for that plan. Again, employee doesn't have to or employee can or cannot. It's called contributory or non-contributory, which we'll talk about this. Now, this money here in the plan is invested. So we invest this money in stocks, bonds, certificate of deposit, real estate, so on and so forth. So you just invest that money. That money will earn return, so that money will grow, will earn more return, will earn interest, will earn dividend, will earn rental income, so on and so forth. Then eventually, once those employees retire, what happens is you pay to the employees. You pay the employees money from that plan once they retire, so fund is distributed. Now the question becomes, the, the, the hardest thing about pension, which we don't discuss this in this session, the question is how much you should have in this plan. So how much you should have in this plan. That matters. Why that matters? Because it all depends on life expectancy. How long will these employees live after they retire? Are they going to live 20 years, 15 years? It all depends about their future salary. What, what, what's their future salary? How much their future salary is going to be? And also, it all depends also on the rate of return. For example, in 2017, the stock market did very well. So if you have pension invested in the stock market, you did very well. Okay, the pension is, is in good shape. Or sometime, like in 2008, 2009, all the pensions were losing money, then you have to make up that. So there's a lot of, lot of computation goes into the how much you should have in the, in the plan. Okay, so what, what, what companies use and what government use is actuaries to tell them how much they should have. What's their liability? What's their obligation for the future? What's their obligation for the employees? So this is basically how it works. Government makes contribution to the plan. Think of a plan, again, as an, as an account. Just think of it as an account. Sometimes the employee might make contribution. Funds are invested in various vehicles. Funds earn a return. Obviously, the money earns a return. Then the money is distributed to current retirees. Pension obligation is computed based on various assumptions, and notice here assumptions such as life expectancy, current and future salaries, realized return of the plan, and many other factors that goes into that computation. So actuaries are used to make those estimates, and that's why actuaries make good money, because that's it's complicated, and when it's complicated, you do, you do get, make good money. Now, if you're interested in learning about pension, the accounting of traditional pension, um, again, this is an intermediate accounting topic. It's covered intermediate accounting. If you go to my YouTube channel, I have a bunch of recordings that explain pension. But again, we're not going to get into it in this session. In this session, we're only going to be working about how do government account for their pension, how do government account, how do they specifically report their pension in the fund. Okay, you'll see how. So again, we have contribute, contributory versus non-contributory funds. What does it refer to? It refer to whatever the employee contributes. Remember, I told you, sometimes the employee does not contribute, only the employer, the government contributes, and sometimes they both contribute. For example, in my plan, they take some money from my account, and the college that I work for, the university that I work for, also contributes. So it's a con I am in a contributory plan. I contribute to the plan as well as my employer. We also have to kind of make sure we understand what is a defined benefit plan. And when we say defined benefit plan, we are talking about pension. We are talking about the traditional pension. When somebody says pension, that's a defined benefit plan. What is, what is a pension? Basically, the employer must pay a guaranteed level of benefit computed as a formula. For example, 
sixty percent of the last year of the of the average of the last four years of your uh, of your working years. Okay, so there is a, they will guarantee you a certain amount of money. The risk of additional future liability is on the employer. So the employer, the government, is responsible for guaranteeing that payment to you. You're not responsible for anything. This is what a defined benefit plan is, and this is what a traditional pension is. Now we have defined contribution plan. I would not say this is a pension. This is more like a traditional 401k or 403 if you are in the public sector. What is a defined contribution plan? This is not a pension. Okay, here's how it works. The employer pays based on assets accumulated with investment earning. So the employer pays a certain amount. They would say, we're going to contribute 10, 15% of your, of your salary to a plan, to an account. The risk of insufficient retirement pay is on the employee, not the employer. And you can also make contribution to your plan, but it's a defined contribution. So the employer makes makes a contribution, you makes a contribution, but but the output, simply put, you might contribute to your plan three hundred thousand dollar in total, and that three hundred thousand might go up to ten million. That's just, this is good, or that three hundred thousand because you're investing that money could go down to one hundred thousand. Who takes the risk? You as the employee take the risk, and this is how the four hundred one k works. We are not concerned with four hundred one k. We're going to be talking more about um, pension, traditional pension, but it's worth mentioning because it's it, it might be it's 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 mentioned. Okay, pensions. The majority of local government they they participate in a pension administered by their state. So here's what's going to happen. You have the state here. You have the state, and you have many municipalities, school district, police department, so on and so forth. They all participate in the state plan. So they don't have a plan for themselves. They all participate in the state plan. So state plan often exists for teachers, which is, again, I am I am a member of this. Police, fire department, uh, employees, legislator, and other state and local government employee. These state, these state, these state multi-employer plan might be either agent plan or cost sharing plan. So we need to know what is an agent plan, what's a cost sharing plan. Agent plan is each participating employer, such as the city, has a separate account, and each government keeping track of its own contribution. So basically, agent plan means you have your. For example, remember we have the state up here, and we have many government unit each government unit keeps track of its contribution separately okay what does that mean it means maybe government one we have government two local government three or three different governmental units school district this government might have enough money this government might not have not enough money so each one is we're keeping track of each plan separately so one city government might have fully funded their pension obligation it means they have enough money to fund their employees while a neighboring neighbor neighboring city pension plan would be underfunded because it did not make enough contribution because they don't have enough income so this is one type of uh, contribute uh, pension plan or there is a cost sharing plan statewide in which separate accounts are not kept for each employer Instead, each participating government share proportionally in the resources and obligation of the pension. So here, all those units are all combined together, and they share equally in the obligation and the expense. In such cases, it's either the whole plan is underfunded or the whole plan is overfunded. So we either all have enough money in our accounts or we don't have enough money in our accounts. So this is the cost sharing plan. When it comes to reporting, uh, uh, when it comes to reporting, we are concerned with two things, and we're going to only cover one of them. So two categories of pension reporting. Now we're going to get into the accounting part of it. We have the employer reporting and we have the plan reporting. We are concerned as far as this chapter, as far as this recording, is with plan reporting. Employer reporting is what I did in intermediate accounting. How does the employer, the company, report their pension? Now the government could also have employer reporting, but we're not going to cover this because it's very similar to the private sector. We're going to be we're going to be looking at plan reporting. Plan reporting. How does the pension? How does the government report their pension within the fund? Okay. So let's see how it works. Employer reporting involved measurement of pension liabilities and annual expense. This is what you learn in intermediate accounting. These are reported in the financial statement using the economic measurement focus and accrual basis of accounting. Again, we don't have to worry about this for this session. We are looking at plan reporting. Here, it applies to governments as that acts as a trustee for a retirement plan. So here's how does the government report the pension for their citizen, their pension obligation. So it's different than employer reporting. 
because of the trust relationship the resources managed on behalf of the current and future employee employee retirees are reported in a fiduciary funds and this is what a fiduciary fund is it's a plan reporting we are reporting on how much obligation do we have that's that's what it is so plan reporting applies to government administering the pension so we're not looking at the whole pension account just how does the government what's the responsibility so we're going to have a statement of fiduciary net position report the access notice of currently available resources over currently payable to retiree employee so a retired employee so basically what we do is we look at what assets do we have currently available asset minus current liabilities not minus all the liabilities only benefit currently payable minus current liabilities so we could have assets of 100 and current liability obligation is 20 the net is 80. so we don't report all the liabilities we only report the current liability and what are the current liability what do we need to pay our employees in the next year or so okay so notice you don't have to report all of your obligation you just have to report your current obligation the current obligation is how much you have to pay now notice the statement does not report liability for amount expected to be paid to current employee when they retire in the future we don't have to do the future just what is what do we have to pay now in the next year okay employer reporting again we don't have to worry about this applies whether applies whether the government manage its own plan or participate in a plan administered by another government this is totally different we're looking at the pension plan as a whole the central issue of employee reporting are the measurement and presentation of the net pension liability in the statement displaying the financial position and the related recognition of pension expenditure or expense so here looking at the whole plan current long-term everything plan reporting is different plan reporting is a specific to the fiduciary fund okay let's take a look at the statement of fiduciary net position assets notice it's assets less which is i just showed you short term accrued liabilities and notice the word short term not all the liabilities only the short term liabilities but we include all the assets all the assets available then we have a statement of changes in a fiduciary net position basically like an income statement however we use the words additions and deduction instead of revenues and expenses but it's basically again we're going to look again we're going to look at transaction look at those statements uh, what else do we need to disclose in a pension fund required disclosure we need to, to disclose no this is disclosure not financial statement disclosure 10 year schedule of changes of a net position net pension liability and related ratio again disclosure 10 year schedule of employer contribution and 10 year schedule of investment return only disclosure only disclosure okay so we don't have to put those on the financial statement only disclosure so to illustrate the point the best way to do is just to work an example so this is the statement of fiduciary net position for the village of riverside so those are their available assets which is cash uh, they have cash of thirty thousand five hundred they have accrued interest receivable they're waiting to be paid fifty thousand they have bonds this is their investments this is what they're invested in they have 3.2 million in bonds and they have 2.1 million in common stock and they have commercial paper and repurchase agreement which is a form of an investment of five hundred thousand this is their total asset five million eight hundred eighty thousand five hundred dollars and they have accounts payable they have accounts payable and accrued liabilities accrued expenses of thirty thousand, which is again short term so right now their assets minus their current liabilities gives us their net position so let's take a look at the first transaction in the first transaction we're going to be receiving this accrued fifty thousand dollars so here's what's going to happen accrued interest receivable beginning of the year was collected remember we were waiting for fifty thousand we debit cash credit accrued receivable basically okay the second transaction we're going to make contribution to the plan so who makes contribution and uh, under this plan we're going to be we're going to be making member contribution which is member means employee contribution employee is going to make contribution and the employer is going to make contribution and they're going to make the exact contribution 210 therefore the plan the the uh, we debit cash and the plan and the pension fund 420,000 and we credit addition contribution plan member and addition contribution plan member 210,000 now notice notice we're debiting cash okay now we're not doing accounting for the plan itself this is reporting what are we doing for the plan because in the real world so let me just kind of give you a taste and i'm going to do this only once okay because i don't want to confuse you for the for the for the administrator for let's assume we have our plan with fidelity what we need to do we need to credit cash so technically what happened the government credited cash four hundred and twenty thousand and debited pension expense 
slash obligation, depending if they're paying an expense or an obligation. So when we when we send this money to the external state pension administered plan, and, and, and I said fidelity just to tell you, let's assume fidelity is handling the plan, which is a financial institution. This is the entry that we make, okay? But we're, we don't. We are not making entry for the plan itself. We're only making reporting on the plan. What's happening to the plan? And this is why we're only making the fund funds accounting, the funds entry. Okay. And let me erase this again. Don't worry about this. Accrued benefit ben, benefit liabilities. Now, as benefits are accruing, it means now they are be, the 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 payments are becoming due. What are we going to do? We're going to accrue them. We're going to accrue them as not expenses, as deductions. Annuity benefit in the amount of one ten and disability benefit in the amount of fifteen thousand were recorded as liabilities. So what happened is now we are coming up to paying those liabilities. So we, we're going to accrue them. Therefore, we debit deduction annuity benefit one hundred and ten, debit deduction disability benefit fifteen thousand, and credit accounts payable and accrued expenses. So what does that mean? It means in the next year, we're going to have to pay annuity benefit of 110 and disability benefit of 15. So what do we do? We're accruing them now. We're going to pay them later. Payment of payable and expenses. Now, accounts payable and accrued expenses paid in cash amounted to how much? 140. Where did that 140 came from? Remember, this example, we are using um, we, we started with 30,000. Remember, we started liabilities of 30,000. Then we accrued. Then we just accrued. We started liabilities of 30,000. Then we accrued 125. Now our liabilities is 155. And we just paid 140. Therefore, we debit accounts payable and accrued expenses. And we credit cash. So this is the payment of the accrual. Now what's going to happen? Sometime we're going to have to refund some amount. So, so let's assume an employee contributed to the plan, contributed $3,000 to the plan. And they're hoping they're going to be with the county or with the city until they retire. Then what happened is they left. They left the company. They left the city. They left the county. They left their job. They, they found another job. So what are we going to do? We're going to give them back their money because that's their money. So we're going to refund the money with them because the, their, their benefit did not vest. Vest means they don't qualify to participate in the pension because they left. So terminated employees whose benefit were not vested were refunded $50,000 in cash. So what's going to happen is this is basically a deduction from the plan. So we're going to give them back $50,000. Therefore, we debit deduction refunds to terminated employees. And obviously, we're going to give them back their cash, credit cash. Now, investment income, as I told you, we're going to invest our money in stocks and bonds, and they're going to generate dividend and interest and all sorts of income. What are we going to do? We're going to account for this. So investment income received in cash amounted to 410000 So we received cash of 410000 of which 210 was dividend and 200000 was interest. Also, we, have, we, can, we, we are going to accrue $70,000 of interest income at year end. So basically, we are waiting for $70,000. We have not received it yet. So we debit cash 410 for the cash that we received. We accrue the interest. The interest accrued 70000 which we're going to be receiving early next year. We're going to credit addition, which is some sort of a revenue account similar of interest, 270 And we have revenue additions of dividend 210000 Again, those are investment income. Additional investment activities. Remember, we had commercial paper. Let me go, up, go back up here under investments just to kind of show you where this transaction is coming from. We have commercial papers and repurchase agreement of half a million. So we have commercial paper and repurchase agreement. What are those? This is when commercial paper is when you lend the money on a short term basis. We lend the money and what's going to happen? They're going to give you back your money once that commercial paper mature. So now what's going to happen is we're going to have a commercial paper that's maturing. Commercial papers and, and repurchase agreement carried cost at 200000 mature, and the cash in that amount was received. So basically, we're getting back our money. So we debit cash, credit commercial paper, because, because commercial paper is a form of an investment, and we're getting our money back from the investment. Additional investment activities, common stock carried at fair value, $1,250,000, were sold at $1,300,000. So we had some investment. It has a value of $1,250,000. We sold it at $1,300,000. We have a gain. So we debit cash credit the investment to get rid of the investment because we sold it. Then we have an addition investment earning net increase in fair value of 50,000. So basically we sold an investment. We sold some of the of our investments and we made a profit. Then we made a new investment. We purchased half a million in stocks and 1.26 million in bonds. So we debit investment in bonds. 
should be sorry investment in bond should be 1.6 million i made a mistake here an investment in common stock should be 500,000 just i basically switched the numbers and obviously we paid cash we credit cash also for the plan we're going to have uh, employees working there we're going to have some administrative expenses so administrative expenses for the year totaled eighty thousand dollar obviously that's an expense we have a deduction debit which is administrative expense and we credit cash eighty thousand dollar remember at the end of the year we have to report our investment at fair value therefore we have to find out what happened to our investments so let's see what happened during the year the fair value of the common stock increased by forty thousand the fair value of the bond went down by thirty Okay, we're going to debit investment in common stock, 40000 to increase the value. We're going to credit invest, credit investment in bonds, 30000 to reduce the value. And overall, we are 10000 better off. So we have, in addition, investment earning, which is a net increase in the investment of $10,000. And at the end of the year, what do we do? We close all the nominal account, which are the additions, which is the contribution member, 200000 the employee contribution, um, addition of the interest, uh, addition of the dividend, addition of, and the increase in fair value, and we also cl close all our deductions, which are expenses, 110 for the annuity benefit, 15,000 for the disability benefit, refund to terminated employees and administrative expenses, and the difference is 705,000. So basically, we made more contribution, and more additions than deductions of 705,000. Now, this is what the forget about the private purpose trust fund we already went over this in the private purpose trust fund so this is basically the statement of changes in the fiduciary net position and this is basically like an income statement so we have the contribution we have the additions we have the additions like revenues we have contribution from employees and employers so this is both of them contribute then then we earn interest we earn dividend and we have an increase in the value so total earnings 590 contribution plus earnings 960 then we paid annuity benefit refund to employees administrative expenses and total deductions were 255 and disability benefit as well and disability benefit as well so overall again 705,000 whoops 705,000 was the net increase and we'll take the net increase plus the beginning net position which is coming from the balance sheet gives us the ending net position so this is basically the income statement again forget about the private trust this is the balance sheet or the statement, not the, not, this is the statement of fiduciary net position, but basically it's AKA, AKA the balance sheet. Cash is 40,500. Now we have accrued receivable of 70,000. Remember when we started the prior year, we had 50,000. We have bonds of 4,770. We have stocks. We have commercial paper only of 300,000 because we started with 500,000. We got $200,000 back and we still have accrued expenses and accounts payable now of 15,000 and our net position now is six million five hundred fifty five thousand and five hundred dollars so this is basically the financial reporting of the fiduciary funds if you have any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class and if you're studying for your cpa exam always 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 study hard it's worth it